Okay, so out my window, I see a ruby red Nissan, and that is not a uh, 392 cubic inch Jeep. Holy mackerel, what? <laughs> Hello. What's up? What, what is this? What are, this is Nissan Kicks. Yeah, let's turn the AC oh, down on. here. Hold yeah, on. I've been, I've been enjoying the AC. They're going to hear a lot of blowing wind on the microphone here. Why? This is awesome. Wow. All right, so what do, you, what do you think? Let me just soak this in for a second. Right. That screen is enormous. So these are the 12.3-inch uh, screens. So the Nissan Kicks, if you guys remember, it was kind of a um, funky uh, car. They just redesigned it, and it's still a funky car. And this is a $30,000 car. They start at $21,000, so it's one of the most affordable ones. But it doesn't so feel like a cheap car. Where is this in the lineup? Like this is this is thirty. This is fully this, loaded. Yeah, this one's this is an SR. So this you is you got these contrast stitching, red and silver, kind of like big carbon screen, fiber, carbon leather. fiber. This is pretty nice. Yeah, so it's uh, got a little one point six liter uh, four cylinder, not a turbo. Just, so it's got like one hundred and twenty two horse or something. Did, so did, you, did, you, did you buy this or is this yeah, Nissan's? No, this is Nissan's. Okay, I, got, Nissan. I don't know you well, and I thought I knew everything about you, and I because like. You got well, the freaking Aria. You got Aria, now you've got a Kicks. Yeah, so the, here's the deal. Uh, they called me and they said, hey, we've got uh, a new Kicks in, and since you always drive trucks, do you want to drive the car just to see? And I'm like, all right, yeah, let's uh, let's do that. So I'm like, are we the car show drive. podcast now? Uh, no, we are the economy car podcast. <laughs> so <laughs> hold okay. on, let me buckle up. Hold on, we're leaving my house. Hang tight. It's going to ding at me, I'm sure. Here we go. So this car's claim to fame should be the car that's least likely to need a uh, pedal monster. Oh, really? Because Why the pedal tipping's awesome. Like okay. it's really fun and really responsive. It's not, you know, it's a it's a economy car, right? Like it's a budget car, but it doesn't feel budget. It drives awesome. It's super sporty. It's a little bit loud on the road noise. Uh, well, that's, most that's, of the could that be are, tires? No, it's all tires. Okay. Yeah, um, but it's okay otherwise. And then you know, it's it's plenty of power. For merging, getting on the freeway and going, this one's all-wheel drive. I don't believe you. Why don't you show But me? it's not, you know, it's not a rocket ship, but it's fine. It's all fine right. for what it is. All here. right. Zero to six. Here we go. Well, I don't know about the zero to 60, but... That's fine. Well, it's like, smooth, uh, it's, smooth shifting. It's fine. You get 35 miles to the gallon or something like that, or, or low 30. It's not as quick as your Aria, I will no. tell you that. Yeah. No, the Aria smokes. And that's the Aria is just because you have all that torque. But yeah, it's fine. But look at it. Like the driving position is awesome. It's funky looking, but in a good way. Like it's I not don't think it's car. funky looking. I don't know why you're saying I that. I love it. I think it's funky. I think it's kind of got uh, some style to it. It kind of looks a little bit like a... Like a refined, sh you know, shoe or something like that. <laughs> refined shoe, Look like a, a, like a Nike. A, it has a big sunroof on. Yeah, it, it does. It's got a full moon roof. Okay. Well, the, wow. See in the back, dude. The seats are huge. Or plenty of room here. in the back seat. Yeah. I really like the seats, the inlays. That's uh, so it says, that's uh nice. wireless CarPlay and Android Auto. It's got the basically the same setup as my Aria with the, with the dual uh, twelve point three inch screens. Uh, capacitive touch for you know all of the climate control stuff and do you like that or not because uh, I, like I know this, you're a hard button person I like this better than it was in the Aria because the Aria is kind of hard to figure out where you touch it this seems to be a little bit more responsive that's what she said and it has like uh, little dots for your finger to find on the you know where the button is so Locators, like there's you know, braille it's got braille yeah, yeah yeah there you go I got it so but it's uh, yeah, for being a you know a basic commuter it's stylish it's got really comfortable zero gravity seats again nissan is like the best in the industry of seats like all their cars their seats are great power mirrors door locks big pano sunroof it's got the 12 point inch dual digital display you said this is 30k 30k okay i mean that's pretty darn good did you all, sign it for 30k it's all-wheel drive did you, it's all-wheel drive yeah. really yeah okay did you sign any kind of an agreement that would allow us to uh, de-virginize it uh, by eating wiener schnitzel inside. Uh, well, that's probably an unfortunate choice of words for you, but I, because I speak lightning, I understand. Uh, we're gonna break it in. I with understand some what wiener you're schnitzel. saying. Yeah, yeah, I get the sentiment of your thoughts. So yeah, we're gonna go to wiener schnitzel <laughs> right. and uh, carry home some uh, some chili dog. Uh, I know truck guys sometimes like to have an economy car uh, to offset their uh, gas guzzling. Yeah, yeah it's kind of your size. Yep. And I'm just gonna say this one's not a bad one, actually. Uh, like it a lot. Okay. What do you want from uh, Wiener Schnitzel? What do you think I want? My two chili dog combo, Dr. Pepper, medium fries. No cheese. Wiener Schnitzel, you like trying a new lemonade? Uh, no, but I'm going to do a, a two chili dog combo. 
with a Dr. Pepper. You want cheese in your chili dogs? Uh, not on this order. These ones will just be uh, no cheese. Okay, regular size with the Dr. Pepper? Yes, regular size. Right. Yep. And then I'm gonna do a second uh, two chili dog combo with the Dr. Pepper. Those ones, I do want cheese on them. Okay, small, medium, or large? Uh, we'll do a medium. And what kind of drink? Uh, Dr. Pepper on that Dr. as well. Pepper too, okay. And that'll do it. 26.81 on the window. All right, thank you. <laughs> I know. Can you believe it? That's Cali- twenty six dollars for four hot dogs, two fries, two drinks. I know. That's Are you California? What is yeah. this? Oh, because eighteen dollars an hour. Yeah, because, because that's what happens the, when you have minimum wage. Oh my and, god! You, you guys have no idea what it's like to be in California. Do you want to put this on my credit card and over like and pay over uh, no, like installments? I want it gone. I want it gone today. I'm not going to pay any more off of. Uh, Oh, it looks like uh, we're close to the wall here. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's telling you that you're too there close you on the left. Yeah. That's good. Oh, yeah. Cool. By the way, 360 yeah. God View camera on here. Dang. Not bad, right? For 30 grand? This screen oh, is this clean. When you light it up at night. Uh, Let me see. Hold on. Hold on. It's going to turn the headlights on? No, this whole LED, this whole LED strip. Oh, dude, the like strip that. lights up? Yeah. Oh, on the doors, yeah. too. Isn't that cool? Oh, really, really neat. Dude, we're geeking out dude, on I'm a little totally compact like, car. I What's know. up with that? It's dude, you can fit a big gulp in here. Thank you. What? It's for the uh, big ones, but also those big uh, stainless oh, Stanley. water bottles. Like a Stanley? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or a Yeti or whatever your big right. stainless water bottle is. And I, I would do a, a stick because I'm always going to ask for that, even though everybody's going away from it. I think a little Turbo 4, if it had like 180 horse, would be like perfect for this thing. It did feel a little bit light. I'm it's, not going to lie. It's, a little it's bit light. all-wheel drive, and it's yeah. got all this content. Like, it's, you know, it's fine. It's fine for around town. You're not racing people. But a Turbo 4 in this and, and to be a little bit quieter. That's it. I wouldn't do anything else. I don't know what you mean about the quiet. I guess we haven't been on the highway yet. Yeah, We're just right yeah, to just, uh, Wiener Chisel. T- yeah, just tire noise on, on at, you know, 80 miles an hour. Okay. But I took it at 80 miles an hour, no problem. Like, cruise to 80. Oh, it has adaptive cruise control. Well, I know you love that. I do. And it has lane centering. So I don't can, ever use that stuff, but so I know you, you do. Put your you put your uh, hand on the wheel and you just hold it, and it steers in the lane for you. No kidding. Yeah, a $30,000 car. I drove from California to Colorado in a car that had it, and I never turned it on. Yeah, that's uh, that's yeah. Uh, stupid. Stupid on your part, yeah. 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 All right, on this truck show, on this truck show podcast. Oh, were we, we're not talking about a <laughs> Nissan Kicks? No. Uh, we're, we have the president. Can you believe that? Uh, different president, I think. Yes. The president, president. of Actually, the Specialty Equipment Market Association. Two presidents yes. on this show. Two president well, on this episode? A million later, yeah. Interesting. Okay. Well, we should start by thanking Nissan, the uh, purveyors of such kicks. So if you uh, want to get your kicks on any route, including 66, then uh, go down to your local Nissan dealership. Nissan presents the Truck Show podcast. We appreciate them for their partnership. Usually we're talking about Frontiers and the upcoming Armada, which, by the way, I'm driving next month. Super stoked on that. Uh, But today we're sitting in a Nissan kicks and it's going to say it. It's awesome. Okay. Okay. I appreciate that. And even though you don't need a pedal monster with this car because the throttle tippet is money, most cars or trucks you do. So uh, I believe you have a solution for that. I do the Banks Pedal Monster. So if you guys are driving a truck, listen, if you have an eco diesel, whether it's the Ram or a Jeep, maybe you got a Ford F-250, uh, maybe like a, a 2014 F-250. You're like, I just need more out of this pedal. It's just the pedal feels, to steal your phrase, Holman, wooden, yep. right? I don't even know what that means. So it's sluggish. It feels like there's not much in the mid-range. The Banks Pedal Monster will cure that and unlike any other pedal device on the market when you shift into reverse Holman what does it do uh, it knows you're in reverse and it reverts back to factory pedal sensitivity so that you don't blip it in through the uh, back of the garage. That's exactly right. Head over to bankspower.com. There are hundreds of applications, whether it's for your, your small car, your compact, your wife's SUV, or your full-size pickup. Bankspower.com has your pedal monster. Uh, we want some, uh, yeah, mustard, please. Yeah. Right in the middle of my read. All right. Thanks, my friend. Have a good day. Feel how heavy that is. That's $20 for that. <laughs> 26. All right. Well, if, if you need to uh, lubricate your vehicle the way uh, Lightning and I need to <laughs> lubricate our innards, also probably synthetic, <laughs> you'll head over to Anzo.com for our friends over at Anzo. By the way, they're going to be doing a promotion with us uh-huh. uh, in the next few weeks that uh, you are going to want to know about. I've seen this. It's kind of cool. It, it's going to be really cool. So uh, we'll announce it when it comes up. But Anzo Oil makes the finest synthetic lubricants, whether it's car care products or greases oils, transmission fluid. Do you think that they license out any of their technology to Wiener Schnitzel uh, for, for that chili? chili yeah. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> Just, uh, that it goes right to you. Uh, yeah, it's definitely <laughs> synthetic. Anyway, uh, if you're looking for any... It's of very low viscosity. 
if, well, it is later on. Uh, I think the viscosity actually has a very uh, long, uh, wide range. I, I think it's like it. it's zero four hundred or something <laughs> like that. So, uh, if you're looking for the best synthetic oils and lubricants for your vehicle, head over to AmsOil.com. They are amazing supporters of the Truck Show podcast, and Lightning and I use AmsOil products in our own personal vehicles. You should too. They are the first in synthetics. And I wanted to remind you guys that the deal at EGR is still going on through December. This is massive. If you're thinking about getting the world's best tonneau cover, manually retracting tonneau cover, it's called the Roll Track, head over to EGRUSA.com because they still have this promotion, which is crazy. 30% off and a $250 rebate on the manually retractable Roll Track tonneau cover. Head over to EGRUSA.com to find the one for your truck. They've got it for Gladiators and Ford F-150s and Rams, you name it. And they're adding applications all the time. Again, EGRUSA.com, up to 30% off and $250 back on a rebate. And don't forget, if you recently bought an EGR product, head over to TruckShowPodcast.com to the featured products page where you can uh, find the instructions for getting yourself a rebate. All right, put in sport mode and hit it! The Truck Show. We're going to show you what we know. We're going to answer what the truck. Because truck rides with The Truck Show. We have the lifted. We have the lowered and everything in between. We'll talk about trucks that run on diesel and the ones that run on gasoline. The Truck Show. The Truck Show. The Truck Show. It's The Truck Show with your hosts, Lightning and Holman. You were in Tennessee, and you were part of the hoopla that was the Scout Reveal. I was there. And at first I thought it was a Rivian Reveal, as did most of the world. And no, then not I, true. I, I, just what, I, not, not just me. I was in a room full of eight people that they all said, oh, that's an interesting Rivian. Literally, the, the SUVs don't even look alike. <laughs> okay. Except that they look almost identical, no, they right? Well, we'll They're talk about even, that. Let's, not even close. Okay, Holman, are you prepared to speak to the president? The, the president of SEMA. Oh, the president right, of SEMA. Right, yeah, well, I was about to get really excited. I'm like, oh, who'd you get on this yeah. show? That would be awesome. Nope, yeah. Joe Rogan beat us to it. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Did you hear that? I On the way here. It was awesome. Yes. I Well, was, I've been listening for 31 hours. I've got yeah. two to go. Yeah, well, I know. It was really long. Yeah. But he was uh, very measured, I'd say. Yes, <laughs> and and had some singers. There are some, some good, good stories, though, yeah, there, yeah. too. So if you haven't listened to that, I, I know we don't necessarily promote Joe Rogan all the time because he can crush us and he doesn't need us. But uh, He wouldn't crush us. But, he's, he's a good guy. But listen to this one. This is, this is a good one. Okay. Uh, this is the other president, Mr. Mike Spagnola, president of the Specialty Equipment Market Association. No secret that the SEMA show I know is coming up next week. Yeah, he's the one who sent me a duck from Italy. A duck from Italy? So he was on vacation in Italy, and there was a complete entire store filled with rubber ducks. Yeah. And oh! so he knows about all the Jeep stuff? I was there. I, I was at that store. Oh, I walked into that yeah. duck store. So he bought me a duck yeah. and shipped it to me. And I oh, see it from Mike Spagnola. I open it up, and it's a rubber ducky. Well, and let's, I saw this and let's I thought, get him on the phone and thank him. I think that if it's the same one... It was in uh, let's. See, it was in uh, Florence, something like that. Yeah, yeah that's I think right. it was in Florence yeah. where I saw it. Yeah. All right, let's call the president. We are looking for the president, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, have we found him, or is this the secretary to the president? <laughs> This oh. Is he. oh my gosh, we actually have the hotline this, directly into the Oval Office. This isn't the uh, secretary's music. No, oh, no, it isn't. No. <laughs> Does he, Mike, do you have like a square office or is, your, is yours round, <laughs> oval, spherical? What kind of office does the president of uh, uh, SEMA have? I think have? it's parallelogram. A parallelogram? Yeah, really? <laughs> it's a parallel- this is, you know, you've been to my office. You know that. I know. <laughs> it, he's got, he's got, a, cor- he's got a corner suite. And it's got it, look, it looks over the uh, 57 freeway. What a view. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, think about it. He's the president of SEMA, and he gets to look at cars in slow motion all day long. In slow motion? Yeah, because, because the traffic yeah. on the 57. Oh, you're right. It is yeah. awful at that interchange yeah. right there. So right at the 60. He just looks out his window. He's studying cars. I mean, it's perfect. So, it is. It is. So, Mike, welcome back from uh, Italy. Holman was telling us that you sent him a duck, and I said, wait a minute. Did he get it from the duck store in Florence, Italy? Because I was just in that I duck did. store. Yeah. You were? Yeah. <laughs> and yes. he did not bring yeah. me back a duck. 
No, I didn't think about bringing anybody back a duck. See, Mike is a Mike's a giver. I'm a taker. <laughs> we, we know. <laughs> That's so, hilarious. Yes, I'm in the same duck store as you. Yeah, they have uh, ducks. I don't know. It's like little rubber ducks of every imaginable, like the Simpsons ducks and you know South Park ducks, but they're all little rubber ducks. It's kind of yes. bizarre that a store exists just to sell rubber ducks. But enough about that. Like, we wanted to check in with you first. Uh, we've got a, a list of things that we're going to blaze through because we know the time is limited as you prepare for the biggest show of the year. Let's start by talking about SEMA Fest. I think that you must be really tired from scheduling 65 concerts. Like, there are so many concerts so, happening so at last the SEMA year, show this year. There's like the big one at the end, but now there's a bunch of concerts sprinkled throughout the uh, festivities. Yeah, so Friday night, uh, we moved the SEMA Fest back on campus. And really the, the cool thing for you listeners is that you can now, as a consumer, go to the SEMA show on Friday. It's always been, you know, you had to be in the business. We talked about this before, that some people have a friend that gets them in. Largely for consumers, they haven't been able to go to the show. Now the show is open for consumers on Friday. You can either go to the show or go to SEMA Fest, which is 4 o'clock and goes through 9.30, 10 o'clock. Or you can go just to SEMA Fest, go to the combination of the two. But for $140, you can go to both the SEMA show and SEMA Fest. $140. And, bucks. Uh, That's the best ticket in yeah. town. Yeah, you, I mean, that's is. Like, that is one-tenth what you'd pay to see, like, the Stones. Well, especially when you look at the lineup, you'd cage the elephants, Sublime. And this is Sublime with Jacob, which is pretty cool. Fits in the Tantrums, Petey. Um, I mean, there's some yep. pretty big uh, names coming up. And you guys will be there. You, you didn't mention that. I mean, that's that's what the person alone. <laughs> I mean, we appreciate that, but let's be honest. Nobody cares. Can I, uh, can I <laughs> intro Cage or Sublime from the stage? Uh, sure, sure. I, I mean, that, sure, that, that wasn't like, a yes, though. <laughs> like, sure, I'm to the side of the stage in the outhouse. Yeah, and he's yeah, like, Here, he's, here's a mic. He's like, and sure. And on. then on Monday morning, he's gonna be like, Yeah, I talked to our people. And by the way, that's not happening. It not wouldn't happen. be the first time that I introduced Cage the Elephant or Sublime. And it's interesting for those that aren't familiar with Sublime. Jacob Knoll is Bradley Knoll's son, and Bradley Knoll passed away in '96, I think, '95, '96. Jacob. People thought that someday he might fill in for his father, but he wasn't ready. And it was just recently when he was, when he rejoined Eric and Bud. And it's incredible. If you close your eyes, Jacob sounds like his father. I mean, when you see them live, he has the same mannerisms. He looks different. He's got kind of a kind of froey hair and stuff, but like, man, is he a good singer? He definitely got his father's chops and uh, it's going to be really cool to see him on Some stage. Some say better. And they've been touring, and they're playing some of their old stuff. 140 bucks to see SEMA. So let's explain what SEMA Fest is. SEMA Fest is a lot of the best cars from the SEMA show leave Friday and go directly over to SEMA Fest. You also have vendors, music, food. It literally is a festival with cars at the core, correct? Yep. We're going to have Nitro Circus and drifting and all sorts of exhibitions and music. So it's a combination of a great concert and, of course, cars. Who, who, who can who could not love that? Now, are there any kind of like build-offs or is there something live happening with cars or like burnout contests? I know you said Nitro Circus, so I'm sure we'll see backflips, drifting, stuff like that. Uh, but is there um, like, are you announcing any awards at SEMA Fest? Yeah, we're going to have the Battle of the Builders, which goes on all week. And it's the uh, top builders. I think there's over 180 applicants this year for Battle of the Builders. So, oh, cool. you know, all these car builders, uh, there's a young gun section for those under 27 years old goes on all week. We're going to be live streaming that, by the way, at SEMAshow.com. The whole show is going to get live streamed all week long. Friday, the battlers will crescendo at SEMA Fest. And so we'll be showing that along with lots of um, different exhibitions all night long. It's music and burnouts and smoke, tires burning and you know, all that. <laughs> Turning perfectly Thanks good tires into smoke. Now, not to be confused with a concert that you're throwing at the beginning of the SEMA show, I think on Tuesday, right? The first day of the show. And you've got something, yep. is that for SEMA members only? And that's in, that's at, at the convention well, center, correct? That's convention. Well, it's in the same spot, actually. It's really a industry concert, but you know, it's really meant for everybody going to the show, but consumers can get into that as well. Wait a minute. So consumers can go to the first, like it, you're opening the gate. Is it in the front section out by the monorail at the convention center for everyone to see? Just below South Hall. We don't really promote it as a consumer event, but consumers can go. I mean, anybody can buy a ticket. $49, anybody can buy a ticket. My favorite band that night is actually OAR. I, I just love them. Oh, nice. 
So who's I, I'm I was looking for the lineup really quick here. It was OAR. Who was the uh, the headliner? Goo Goo, Goo Goo Dolls. Oh, Goo Goo Dolls. Yeah. Goo Goo Dolls. Yes, they. Uh, that is a band that people all know for their big hit name. And, but they, they have were, a lot of good music. But what's crazy about that band is that they were a New York punk band, like a pretty hardcore punk band, that had a big ballad that went crazy huge. And then they said, oh, I guess the money is in this style of music. And they softened everything down. But if you go before their kind of their seminal album with name on it, I forgot what it was called. Like, it's all punk. People go back into the catalog and they go, wait, what? Is this the same band? And it's, it's like, actually uh, really good. It's like Plain White Tees have like Delilah is that one uh, hit. But yes. It sounds like nothing else that they do. It was kind of like we all going back to Sublime when Sublime. I, it's funny that earlier today I was shooting a video about Sublime. There's a story I'm going to put up on my YouTube channel about Sublime. Most people would not know about Sublime if this one event happened, happened, which I'm going to put on my YouTube because no one. The self-titled album that came out in 1996 called Sublime almost didn't happen. It had been shelved by really? yep. Yeah, it had been shelved by MCA Records because Bradley Knoll had just passed shortly before, and they were like, yeah, people don't realize that they didn't get famous until after he passed away. Right. So there was a single that happened in '94 ish called Date Rape, and it was a minor hit on the West Coast and didn't get much beyond the West Coast. It was colleges played it, things like that. But they were signed based on that. They were little on this little album, um, little record label called Gasoline Alley. And then later they got a bigger deal with MCA. So Gasoline was distributed through MCA. After this little minor hit, they go into the studio and they spent like a year and a half, two years trying to put together this kind of more hip hop ish album because they were kind of a ska punk band. You'll, if mm. hardcore fans will remember that they recorded some stuff early in the day with uh, No Doubt and Gwen and whatnot. Sublime uh, goes into the studio, go through two producers, really famous producers at the time. And they pop out this amazing record. Bradley passes away in 96 in a hotel in um, San Francisco, I believe it was. So he passes away. The record label doesn't know how to promote it posthumously. So they go into limbo. And the manager at the time, there's two managers that kind of fought over. Uh, one did a the, like day to day and one was the record label manager, Miguel Hobbelt and John Phillips. John went to a bunch of record stores thinking he was going to start seeing sublime posters and such on the walls of these local Southern California record stores in anticipation of this new album coming out. Cause there would be like, like a, you'd see like trailers, movie trailers, things like that. They did the same thing for new music at all the record stores. They'd start teasing singles and teasing artwork and whatnot. Well, in advance, he saw nothing and he goes, Oh no, this is not good. They don't know what to do with us since our lead singer has passed away. And he comes to the realization that they were going to shelve this entire record. It was amazing. Meanwhile, Miguel, who did the day-to-day -day management of the band, was also um, a musician. He has one of three CDs that were pressed of this self-titled album. And it wasn't called, it wasn't self-titled back then. They had like, it was a different name, like We're Killing It, I think is what it was called. So it was, had an inappropriate name as well. There was a date on the calendar for Sublime to play Zeke's Music in Your Own Backyard, which is a weekly Wednesday night new music showcase in Hollywood. And there was no band to play it anymore because they Bradley had passed away, but they didn't want to cancel the date. So they called up Zeke and said, what do you want us to do? And Zeke says, just come down, do whatever you want. So they come down as Long Beach Dub All-Stars. And it was going to be the Long Beach Dub All-Stars first appearance. So they played. And Zeke, I just talked to him the other night and he said he remembers Bud kind of like tearing up as he's setting up his instruments and such and tearing down. So they they played. It was a packed house and everyone was there to see what, what they would do. And after they performed, Miguel put on the one disc he had and they listened to the entire album in the venue. But there was wow. a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of chatting, a lot of going on. So I don't think anyone really t like there were some people singing along and such, but that would have been the only time that anyone had heard that album, and then it was going to go away onto a shelf and never be heard. They're all drunk. They step outside the club. It's 2 a.m. Miguel takes this one of three CDs, because back then, in the early 90s, CDs were expensive to duplicate. $1,000 a piece to duplicate. You could make a cassette all you want, but to duplicate a CD was a big deal. He takes it out of his pocket, and he hands it to Zeke and says, I didn't give you this. Zeke calls Miguel two days later and says, your life is going to change tomorrow. 
The next day, Zeke gives the CD to Jed the Fish, who was the afternoon DJ on K-Rock in LA, arguably the biggest rock station in the world. Jed the Fish plays What I Got. The song instantly explodes. John Phillips, the manager, goes to MCA and says, you got to figure this out. You got to hit. You cannot shelve this album. And they go back and forth and back and forth. And MCA finally acquiesces and says, okay, we'll put some money behind it and we'll bring this to market. And now everyone knows all those hits, Wrong Way, Caress Me Down, all the big hits from that self-titled album, and it explodes. And now within two weeks, 55 radio stations pick it up and the world knows Sublime. So kind of an interesting story. I guess you don't need to see my YouTube video now, but like I thought that, that, that one moment had a drunken dude from the band not handed the CD to a radio station guy. You know what it reminds me of? You today would not be at your favorite lake on your boat it, singing It reminds me of the time I got. that Mike Spagnola got us drunk and then we did a podcast. <laughs> and then we got famous. <laughs> no? Another life in radio or something. How do you know all this stuff? It was crazy. <laughs> like I, uh, yeah. He's I was not just actually, a truck guy. I was there at the time that that happened. I was there. It's something funny, Mike, because, you know, you grew up in Southern California and you were listening to the morning show that I was a part of, Kevin and Bean, the Kevin and Bean show. Yes. And I was there for breaking Rage Against the Machine. I was there for breaking Pearl Jam and Stone Temple Pilots and Corn and Limp Biscuit and all those bands. And so, and Are there like, any bands that you can say that you personally had a part in? Something corporate. Okay. How about 30 Seconds to Mars? Oh, interesting. Jared Leto's band. I brought that into Kevin Weatherly, the mm -hmm. PD, and that exploded. Okay. So there were, I, I, there's half a dozen that I had a hand in. All right. I have 30 gold records. Nice. Yeah. Now, now, I'm, just, now I'm just showing off. No, I mean, you just humble, <laughs> None of them in the podcast studio. Uh, I could bring one. I've got a, a 10 million over at Long Beach Clothing Company sitting over there. For what? Million, sublime. Mm. Back wow. to SEMA Fest. Sorry, I didn't mean to take that sideways. I'm just, I'm passionate yes, about the band. <laughs> no, I didn't actually mean it. That was a long story. I don't, Lightning doesn't tell many long stories on this podcast. That's for Holman. Super excited about this. Again, I want to recap. SEMA Fest is November 8th in Vegas. It's a huge yep. deal. Cage the Elephants, Sublime, Fits in the Tantrums, PD, $140. Gets you into the final day of the SEMA show, the industry only show. So you go to the convention center. You see the Ring Brothers' new car. You see, you know, you go visit Holman, Lightning and Holman, podcasting wherever we happen to be. Like you go and see thousands of the absolute best cars and trucks on the planet. Because if you make tires, you make brakes, you make whatever you make. How do you show it off to the world? You find the best vehicle to put your stuff on, and those are all the vehicles there. And you hobnob with all the stars. You guys are really good at getting celebrities out there, partnering with all sorts of aftermarket parts companies, which is really cool. It's always neat seeing like celebrities in the booths, and not just celebrities that are propped up. Celebrities that actually know the product line is super rad. Um, you guys are great at that. So I would say spend your 140 bucks and go to SEMA Fest and get it all. Get the, get the show, the industry show, and get the concert. Hey, Mike, let me ask you a question. I know uh, this was something that was what came up toward the end of last year. There is uh, construction going on at the convention center. I know we have a ton of people who listen to the show who will probably uh, be curious. They're putting a new facade on, on the South Hall and other buildings to match the beautiful new, um, the beautiful new West Hall. Uh, how is that going to impact the show this year? Is it going to be closed? Is it going to be is it harder for people to get around? What can we tell people listening now? They're going to be at the show a week after this podcast airs. Yeah, yeah. So just to be clear, it's one hundred forty nine dollars, not one hundred one hundred forty. Oh, so I'm sorry, unless, 100... uh, you guys, are... whatever. I'll yeah, give let's... the extra nine bucks to get in. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> You'd kick in the other nine for anybody who wants to go. So, but no. On top of that, there's definitely construction going on, but we've mitigated it as best as possible. But there's a new entryway to get into the show. Once you get inside, you're not going to notice anything different. It's mostly exterior. There's a few areas that are cut off that used to be kind of over near where the Starbucks is. There's some construction going on. But we've been able to mitigate a lot of it, and they really are working. We're the largest show in the convention center in Vegas. And so they've been able to work around us, uh, and um, we've been able to negotiate a lot of that out. So they kind of shut down while we're there, and they start back up after we leave. They built a lot of stuff really around us. So... Is there going to be some construction? Yeah. Is it a little harder to park? Yeah, I would suggest parking off-site uh, or taking the uh, Tesla tunnel in. But once you're there, it's you'll be able to get around pretty easily. 
Awesome. Uh, all right. So SEMA coming up, obviously going to be a great show. Lighting and I will be in the EGR USA booth in, I believe they're going to be in the West Hall, and that'll be Wednesday from 4 to 6. We're going to be doing a live show, interviews uh, from the EGR booth, so I want to make sure we get that plug in. And then there's a bunch of other stuff that's happened lately, Mike, that we wanted to touch on, and maybe we can just touch on it really quick uh, outside of the awesomeness of the, the SEMA show itself. But also, what is SEMA doing for me lately? And there's a couple big stories that have come. One was SEMA's push to get uh, Newsom to veto uh, a bill that would have put speed limiters on everybody's vehicles. The other one was the lawsuit yep. that you guys have in conjunction with the NTEA, the National Truck and Equipment Association, in regards to commercial trucking. But that has some trickle-down effect for enthusiasts. So maybe walk us to those two wins right now. Or I yeah, yeah, one, so, one win and, and one uh, potential ongoing. Win. Yeah, yeah, ongoing. Yeah, yeah. So uh, and then the other is that we've been just really fighting this EV mandates. So uh, EV mandates, you know, if you listen to a lot of the political stuff going on lately, you know, California has to be 35 percent sales by 2026 in, in EV only and completely EV by 2033. Um, 16 other states have followed that. Nothing against EV. We think EVs are cool. We just don't think they should be mandated. So. We continue that fight and continue that discussion. And then, uh, you're right, uh, there was a bill in California It made its way all the way up through the House and uh, onto the governor's desk that would, uh, starting 2029, in California, any new car sold in California would have a speed limit warning on the vehicle. And it would come off if you were doing more than 10, 10 miles uh, over the speed limit. We really felt that that was a, this a federal thing, that it shouldn't be California only, uh, let alone it's kind of a nanny thing, right? If anytime you go over 10 miles an hour over the speed limit. And then the OEs would have to build a separate car for California versus the rest of the United States. So for a lot of reasons, we fought it. And um, uh, Governor Newsom actually did veto that bill, which was um, exciting to see. Do you uh, know, so that's a win. Mike, do you know the reason that he vetoed it? Was it for the reasons that we care about, which is the nanny state? Or was there something else in that bill that he vetoed. Do you know what I mean? Like, are we the beneficiaries of something we don't know about? Like, or is he actually an enthusiast, which would be cool, but would surprise me. No, he's not an enthusiast, but I think he did realize that this is really a federal thing. It's really a NHTSA federal thing. I think he got pressure about the fact that the OEs would have to build a separate vehicle or separate, you know, goodies on the vehicle for California. It just didn't make sense. You know, we're, we're not suggesting by any means that everybody, speed and all that sort of stuff, you know, uh, you know, obey the laws, but just the same to have a separate car having to be built for California versus the other United States just didn't make sense. So, you know, I don't know beyond that, you know, he's usually, uh, he usually sides on the side of very environmental, very safe sorts of things. Um, but this one, I just think he, we haven't talked to him about it, but I'm guessing he, um, just saw the, the fact that it didn't make a lot of sense. It just didn't make a sense to, to have a California only law like that. And it really should be taken up by a federal standard. Now, uh, just to uh, talk about the mandates, which uh, we agree with you. Uh, we think EVs are cool. There's a place for them. We talk about it on the show. I own one. Uh, it's great for certain uses and horrible for others. And that's why I have a 392 in my driveway also. And my wife has a plug-in and you know, each of those has a slightly different need in mm -hmm. our our life. So we're not against EVs by any means, but we definitely do not think they should be mandated. Uh, but I just wanted to say, uh, if you look at the percentages of market share, people might be interested. In 2024 so far, uh, in California, the EV uh, market share percentage is right around 21 High 21%, not quite 22, although it touched there at some points. And then for nationwide, it's about 8.99% right in there. So that kind of gives that you an idea. Lopsided. That gives you an idea of where those things exist inside and outside of California. I figure that might add some context to Mike's conversation with us here. I am glad that this got shot down because I think it is the very slippery slope. Sure, it's just a yeah. warning on your dashboard to say, hey, buddy, slow down. You're going over 10. But there is nothing because all of our cars are drive by wire now. It would be very easily for them to be able to actually depress your brakes or limit your throttle. Like that would be or report. reported. Yeah. You can give you a ticket remotely. Oh, yeah, my I Lord. Mean, just like let, let, let the people. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Let the people have their cars. Yeah, exactly. All right, Mackerel. so uh, moving on to the uh, the last of that trifecta, and that is the lawsuit that you joined NTEA with 
uh, in regards to the commercial vehicle sector. Talk about how that uh, impacts the rest of us who may not be in driving, you know, uh, class eights or medium duty trucks or anything like that. Yeah. You know, it's, um, it's on a couple fronts. Number one for truckers and for, you know, anybody with larger diesel trucks, eventually it would be, you would not be able to license those vehicles in California. So the government would be basically, you would buy a vehicle and it would be not able to get a tax, not able to get registered in the state of California. So uh, whatever money you have spent, you are now not not. And even bringing trucks across state lines, commercial trucks across state lines would have an effect. And then it eventually trickles down to a F450, F350, F250. You know, again, the, the goal is to be currently in California, EV and EV only, and that goes for trucks. You know, on a lot of fronts, uh, we saw this as unfair practice. We saw this as really the government taking away your property because you're not able to use your property. You're not able to sell it. You're not able to use it. You're not able to drive it. And so for a lot of reasons, we are challenging uh, that law, that that potential law. And so um, we had to sue CARB. As much as we are actually friends with CARB, we do a lot of work with them. You know, you guys have seen our labs and the work we do to make sure that parts are compliant uh, and to get the CARB EO. But we thought this one really crossed the line. We knew it really crossed the line. And um, we've had a lot of uh, other folks join us in this uh, in this fight. It's like uh, frenemies, right? Like you have to get along, but there's certain places where you you need a third party to come in. It reminds me a little bit of uh, RFK and Trump, where there's that story where he flew him somewhere on, on the plane. And he goes, but I'm, I'm suing him. And it's like, yeah, yeah, I don't care. Come on the plane. We'll worry about that <laughs> stuff later. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of how it has to be, right? You, you have to really silo or partition the different needs of yeah. the uh, organization and regulations and how you interact because one doesn't always touch the other and you have to have multiple paths to good and sometimes tension in your relationships. Right. Speak to our listeners, Mike, uh, who live in Texas, Vermont, New Jersey, Oklahoma, Montana, who are like, ah, oh, man, that sucks for you guys and Californians, uh, uh, California, again, if this were to go through, this will touch them, not just because they can't drive their truck into California, but because those states may adopt these laws. Or how about you lose California is the biggest automotive market. I think it's the biggest secondary market. What happens to everybody in those states who love to sell their cars to California or their truck that they took care of or something? And now there's a huge, what, 20% of your your buying base is now gone because you can't essentially export your vehicle into California? I get that, but I don't think that's like tangible to the average person. Uh, are you seriously? No, no, but I don't think that's, they're not uh, thinking, where am I going to sell my truck? They're thinking like, there, there I, is definitely people who would be affected by that. I'm not saying that there aren't going to be people affected by it, but I think the thing that would get them immediately to their to their wallet is like if these laws started going across the country. Again, Texas is the you know they love saying right. like ah screw California, you guys have all these laws come to come to Texas and it's a land of the free. I'm like, dude, you're not that far behind us, especially like, since everybody moved yeah. there. Yeah, what's happened with this carb the CV thing? There's 16 other states that have followed. So 16 other states have followed California law and uh, are moving towards this EV EV only. It, uh, what happens in California tends to happen in the rest of the U.S. And then the manufacturers build to that, you know, all those sorts of things. And then if, even if you own a trucking company, what if you want to tow your race car or your off-road car into California? It's a diesel truck. How's that going to work? Yeah, they'll have so, about right at the yeah, border. They get you. It, it continues to expand to all of those sorts of things. You know, it effectively restricts your free freedom of uh, movement, which is right. about as anti-American as you can be. Hey, Mike, I wanted to ask you, so the SEMA Action Network, how do people participate in this? Obviously, they can go to SEMASAN.com, so S-E-M-A-S-A-N.com, SEMASAN, or just Google SEMA Action Network, it'll pop right up. But can anyone join this? Can anyone get involved in these issues, regardless of where they live around the country? Yeah, so two ways. There is uh, SEMA SAN, which you just sign up, and you're part of our deal, and that works really well for us. We've got about 400 and some thousand people on that consumers. Dang. And I got to tell you, like, even when um, this governor knew something came through was signing this bill, uh, we activated the SAN network and we had over 40,000 letters written to 
to uh, Governor Newsom. You know, just <laughs> can you imagine that? Ma- Someone pulls up, by the way, in a uh, in a big diesel truck with a bed full of letters. <laughs> it's the mailman, an F three fifty dually with full of letters. The, the mailman's like has big burlap sacks, <laughs> looking like uh, Christmas uh, wish lists or something. Uh, I don't think so. It's free. You're you know you're part of our CMA Action Network, and it's really an activation site. We let you know what's what rules are going on, what laws are going on, what things that could affect you. Uh, you know, we had a deal. We talked about this before. Where in Georgia, you couldn't lift a jeep or a truck, and um, we activated the uh, Sand Network, and we went and got that law changed. It's really a uh, great resource for us to be active and to know what laws could be affecting you. So Sand is a great way for people to. Uh, Get involved. There's also a new program called SEMA Plus, uh, which is another consumer group you can join. It's forty nine dollars a year, and you get a lot more. Um, you become really a SEMA member. Now, is that and, Mike? Um, is that for guys that are just a little bit overweight like us? Is that yes, not, oh, that's yes. not plus sizes, is it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So SEMA Plus is our individual membership program, and you can actually join to become a SEMA member. Forty nine dollars a year, and there's all sorts of Benefits to that, there's discounts on Oakley glasses and all sorts of things. But you can become a SEMA member for $49 a year, and uh, it's another way to go. So either one of those works. Are we going to see you out at the SEMA show next week? Where will you be? Or will you be? Uh, will you have bodyguards all the way around you, and we won't be able to get through I, I, them? Last year I saw him yes. walking through the uh, hotel lobby uh-huh. with his wife and like a bunch of famous people. And he just kind of looked over and nodded at me. I was like, yeah, I see you. Yeah. Oh, he was yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Oh, he was totally just bragging. Yeah, yeah. He's and like, I, I got this. I'm like, you know what? I know what our relationship is. I don't need to go up and say hi. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and I lift my sunglasses. I looked at my sunglasses and just kind of stared just and barely. back down. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah no, he basically <laughs> nodded to uh, his private security guard uh, walking with him that that guy was okay, didn't uh-huh. need to be tackled for being uh, within five feet of uh, Spags. Seriously, Mike, I'm not even joking. This would be so funny. You have to spend like a couple hundred bucks and get security. It's like two big Samoan dudes in suits with the little things coming out of their ears, you know, the little twisty cables, like uh, Secret Service, and just roll around SEMA for a day no, 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 with, no, no, sec- no. with like no. your Secret Service. It would be That'd funnier be- if you did it because nobody knows who you are and they'd be like, that guy must be famous. And they would all take pictures of you and they would still not know who you they are. Would, they would, yeah. They would do like, go on Google and try and match me to someone yeah. like, this dude hosts a podcast? What? <laughs> yeah, why, why does he have a uh, secret service? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to send paparazzi your way and have flashballs going off. That would be awesome. That would totally elevate uh, yes, our, uh, our awareness of the, uh, the show. So, All right, Mr. Mike Spagnola, we're excited to see you out at uh, the SEMA show uh, next week. And um, we'll, we'll record something in person and not over this crappy phone line. So That would that, be awesome. That will be fun. Hang All out. Right. You Always are love awesome. hanging out with you. You're awesome. All right, we'll, uh, we'll try and actually... Get a beer with you. We like, say that every year. We say that you know every year, but it never is. happens. The problem is, is if 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 the president took up all the offers for we're going to get a beer for you, uh-huh. he would be a raging alcoholic <laughs> at the end of the week. So um, I know the way to do it. No, I know how to do it, Mike. Is it we go? You and I, uh, Holman, we go grab beers. We hand it to him as he's walking somewhere. Uh-huh. So we're like, we have beers with him, but yeah. he's he's in stride. Okay, and then his bodyguard sips it to make sure it's not dangerous, right? I mean, it's us. <laughs> we're not poisoning Mike's oh, no. beer. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to invite you guys on stage. Seriously, Thursday night after the banquet, about 10 o'clock at night, uh, in the Westgate Hotel, there's a bar and there's a band. Yeah. And we've made a tradition, a tradition now. I'm going to bring you guys up with me. We sing Sweet Caroline. <laughs> <laughs> we would record that for the podcast Woo! if that actually happens. Oh, my God. I don't know the words, but uh, Holman does, I'm sure. Do you know the words of no, Sweet Caroline? I do. I okay. Do. You need to know it's bop, bop, bop. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. And I can also, totally do that. Sweet Caroline. Oh, I'm totally bop, in. Bop, bop. All right. It's a date. <laughs> we'll see you next <laughs> week. Right. Uh, in a couple weeks, actually. <laughs> yep. I love it. All right. We love you, Mike. All right. Love you, too. All right. All right see you guys. Soon. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Holman, does this next segment about the Scout fall under the classification of truck review? Uh, Sure. Truck review. Do you think that uh, future scout owners will drag truck nuts? Uh, no. I, here's what I think. I think that the world is, nobody knew quite what to expect. There's a lot of buzz, a lot of hype. Did they expect a Rivian and, lookalike? And look at the screen. Okay. What of those two vehicles look like? They look so freaking close. I can't. Are you stand kidding me? The D pillar is completely different. The I rear glass is it. The C pillar is different. The wheel arches are different. One has a spare tire off the back. The front end is different. 
I don't know what to tell you. To well, me, how do look, those look the same? I, I, one I, looks like did, a school bus, and one looks like an elegant SUV. Were you, well, then look at the truck. Were you no, not no, no, that's on not, Instagram? That's, when, that's not the argument. The argument is what I showed you on the screen of the SUVs. Yes. What? How do those look the same? To me, it looks like they cha- they. It's the same truck with some minor changes. They don't even look alike at I'm all. Why? Because they have you, four doors uh, and four wheels. No, they just it the SUV. Good. I'm showing you Johnny Lieberman's Instagram where right. he put them side by side. The SUVs do not look alike. The at all. reason he did this is because so many people think like I did at that no, moment. No, no, no. He did the trucks first, and then he followed up with the SUVs. I'm showing it. you the SUV first, yes, yes. and then we'll look at the truck. That's fine. Looks the SUVs look, do not look alike. They look less alike. No, no, no. They don't look. They look what less looks alike? alike because they have a roof. It, from the, the C pillar forward, no. they look very, very similar. Be, as does every SUV. They don't even have the same wheel arches. One has curved. One has trapezoidal. I get it, but if you told me. Uh-huh. that Rivian designed the new Scout, I would go, absolutely, yes, they did. No problem. I get it. The rear door isn't even shaped the same. The C-pillar isn't body colored on the Scout. I... By your definition, those also look like Ford Explorers and Toyota 4Runners. Um, uh, 4Runner and, and yes. Durango's. Yes. The, again, you started off with the SUVs that look less alike. But you're saying they look identical, so what does it matter if I started off with the SUVs? I, I have to tell they you. They don't look, the, the SUVs look nothing alike. That's why I started with there. Yes, the trucks look more alike, but yes. Any more they alike look like than a Badger. They any look, more alike than a Silverado 1500 and a Ford F-150 and a Toyota no, Tundra? No, 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 no. Put the two trucks together, the Scout and the Rivian R1T, and they look almost identical because they have the rear door shape that kicks up maybe no the front, the wheels the front aren't the curvature. same the, pr- the proportions aren't Look, the same the leading edge of the hood right here is like there that's, and there are almost identical that's the same on every truck there are the it just one has 33s so one has similar. 35s the body cut lines aren't the same the scout also has a bed separate from the cab also, the Rivian has a four and a half foot bed. The Scout's bed is a foot longer. I get the it. The vehicle's a foot longer. But listen, listen. I know that in hindsight they're not the same. But at the moment they were uh-huh. revealed, everyone collectively said, <gasps> "The, fr- Ooh, the a fronts, new Rivian. The fronts don't look the same. Oh the rears God. don't look the same. The lights are in relatively the same place." They, As again, is they every look- car on the freaking market. What car how do you, can you change where the light position is? But how do you not? Now, I will say that a, a a Nikola Badger also looks like these. So you know what? If you like the Nikola Badger, then you're stoked that the Scout truck has some of those design elements. Oh, wait, also, wait, wait. Why are you the, assuming that I don't like this? I actually really like this. I but think I the just, SUV looks way better than Rivian. One of the, the things I don't like about the Rivian is the R1S is not a cohesive design. The R1S, the pickup truck is great. It's clean. It's modern. It's all those things. The R1S takes the pickup truck. And it just makes it bland. It's so boring. The roof, I don't like the D-pillar. I don't like how upright. I, I, it's I, not sexy. The if, Scout is sexy. If you ask me if I'm going to buy the Scout SUV or the Rivian SUV, it's the Scout all day long. All day long. That top the Rivian photo SUV right there, does not look good. This, no, I'm you're right. I know. The Rivian SUV does saying. not look good. Right. It, it doesn't look bad. Hold on a second. Back I up. don't like the, I, the I Rivian. Don't. Are, the Rivian. I got to stand up now. The the Rivian SUV does look good. It doesn't look as good though as the Scout. The Scout trumped them. Okay, so the the Scout chair. Moving back to the pickup trucks. Yes. What would you have liked to see different? Because it's a three box pickup truck design. It's really hard when government regulations have gentrified whoa, 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 design. Whoa. But wait, I'm not saying that they have to change anything for me. I'm not no, asking. No, no, no. But for I'm anything. asking you. You're, what would what I'm asking you because you say they look identical, and I'm saying. The proportions, maybe, even though the Scout's a bigger vehicle, the Scout looks more Bronco to me than it does Rivian. Look at the front of the, the wheel arches and the nose. To me, that's way more Bronco than Rivian. When you take the two trucks and you put them side by side, the way they are on the screen right now, and you start dissecting that, you go, obviously, they are different trucks. But at a glance, going down the highway, they're the same truck. Mm, I disagree. But I also love design and nuance. Also, the rear ends don't even look alike at all. The Rivian has a bar totally, slit. The, totally disagree. The scout, oh, I disagree. They look very, very similar. Okay, okay. Sure they do. Oh, like wait. It. Are you talking about from the back? I'm talking about the tailgate. I, I can't. I don't know what the tailgate looks like. No. I'm, I'm sh- not I'm, saying anything about the tailgate. I haven't seen it. I'm showing. I'm saying I, the side profile is I'm what I'm showing you. About. This is what the rear of the Scout looks like. Okay. It's nothing like the Rivian. And you're right. That looks nothing like the Rivian. Uh, that's fine. You the got r- me there. Also... 
this little hockey stick in the back is a callback to the Terra design of the original vehicles, which is really a nice design element on top of the bed to kind of uh, give kind of, a nod what back. What would you call cool. like, that's like a divot taking out, yeah, taking out like a scallop or, right, or a scallop. Hockey stick. There you go. And then the cool thing is, if you look on the truck, you don't see it unless you see it in person. And I think like if you saw this in person, it's it's bigger, and I just I like it better. Anyway, there's a grab handle right here. That's the back. very, very cool. So the, the grab, grab handle, yeah, it's vertical grab yeah. handle. At, at the, the back of the D-pillar yeah. or the C-pillar on the truck. So when you step into the foot box that is in the bedside, you, got something you have to hold a place on to. to hold oh, on that's, to. That's really, really cool. So you can really see there's cool. a foot box here, which Rivian really yeah. doesn't have because that's where the tunnel has. So now, that's for the guy, that's behind the rear door. Just yeah. like so a lot kind of the F-150 or a, or a Chevy. GM that, trucks, yeah. 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 So, but they add a grab handle to the back of the cab so you can hoist yourself up. That is brilliant. And there's a lot of little tiny things about Scout. So I'm stoked. I I actually was going to there uh, with big expectations we've talked about on the show. They said, we're going to be about off-roaders and we're going to be about tactile buttons and physical buttons to do secondary controls. We're not going to be about touchscreen everywhere. We're going to be the function. I thought, okay, cool. There's going to be another skateboard, boring, that has touchscreens that have some buttons. What they brought out was so much better than my expectations that I was kind of left upset with myself for for believing that it was going to be derivative and so low. So, well, hold on a second. As a journalist, you have seen that all too often, all the time. So I, I don't, pipe, I don't pipe, fault pipe, you for that. And then yeah. it's like now these are protos, correct? These are protos. These are about eighty to eighty-five percent what you would see in production. Okay, production isn't supposed to be until twenty-seven, so we're still several years out. There's all sorts of questions. They're like, well, what's the battery size? And the CEO's like, I just launched this five minutes ago. Can you guys like let me enjoy the moment? Which I totally appreciated him because there's a couple journalists on the circuit that are. Like, I'm so much smarter than anybody. And, like, they don't know when to give up the questions. I'm like, dude, you're not you're you're not asking the President of the United States to reveal a scandal. Like, you're covering a car. So just let the CEO breathe a little bit. But there's a lot of really cool things on here. So I'll point out a couple. Bench seat. I saw that right away and was like, is that real? A front bench seat. So they're like, this is your favorite, this is your favorite new seat for your kid or your dog. And the crowd went wild. The fact that you have a flat load floor makes it the perfect vehicle for a bench seat. Why wouldn't you have why don't cars have bench seats anymore? So many people are like, that's freaking awesome. Six person I, I think the reason is where do you put your super tanker? You know what I mean? Your big gulp's gotta go somewhere. Well and though there's gonna be uh, cup holders that come out and stuff. Anyway, so two screens on the dash, but just like they said oh what by the way this, what is this weird the, cork style? It looks like wood cork material it's what actually is hemp wood. Oh and, it's actual and, wood. And so yeah it's actual wood and it's super sustainable, uh-huh. so they... Are, Can I smoke it? Uh, it's wood, not the plant. Oh, okay. Um, and so, like, they're really big on all their materials. So I was really impressed with, like, the quality of materials that they picked out for this thing is really incredible. All these physical buttons. And they also did this thing where the volume controls on the steering wheels, but they wanted it to be, like, a, a community, they kept saying, collaborative environment. The passenger gets their own volume knob. And then on the UX, you can actually share between the driver and the passenger split the screen and send what you what the driver was working on maps or music or whatever to the passenger side so it's closer to the, them so they can interact with it so Which when you say that cool. they invo- they control the master volume they can't have like the right side of the vehicle that would be weird well, it's just like the it's no different than your window switch shut them off if you don't want but if they want to control the volume they can do it they got right, their okay. own up how about this i see that now this a is bubble straight compass. this is straight out of an airplane it's a bubble compass no it's just like back in the 60s offroaders you have your like bubble compass they put it in the overhead instead of a digital one. I think it's so awesome to see modern vehicles going back to analog things. So for those of you that are going, what is a bubble compass? This is a snow globe upside down hanging from the roof of the truck with a with it's a compass tiny. It's tiny. It. It's not yeah. snow globe size, but it's the way compasses used to be. It's a ball inside floating liquid that is magnetized, and so that way you can see which direction you're going. I love that analog touch. I think that's cool. Again, love the interior. Um yeah, I guess you can see there's some similarities with Rivian, but I think it's executed a little bit more warmly than the Rivian is. Now you're at the tailgate. Yep. That is cool, but I'd like to see it from a greater distance. I don't I haven't seen one yet. The interior of the bed looks good. It looks like there's a lot of so a lot, t- tie down points. A lot more bed, another foot more bed than Rivian, so it's becomes a truck, right? 
grab handles like we talked about. I'm going through the photos here. Lots of room in the back seat. I think there's maybe more room than the uh, Rivian in the back seat. Hard to tell. Um, they need a mega cab version of this. Uh, I don't Isn't know. Isn't the that. mega cab the best like best okay. truck that Ram ever put out? So this right here, Harvester. International okay. Harvester, and there's an F or something in. It. What is that? Is all, that an all Easter egg? Ex- it's yeah. I'll explain what Harvester is in a minute. I'll explain why this is better than Rivian in a minute too. Let's just go through some of the photos here. See if there's anything else to pick up on. Oh, I noticed that it has the um, sights, like gun sights, on the left and the right in front. Uh, those right. are more tie downs. It's kind of like the Jeep tie uh, downs. Yeah. For what reason? A tie downs ca- coming ca- out of the hood. Yeah. A canoe or something that overhangs the oh, windshield. Oh, sure. Things that are long on the hood. You have they remind me. Uh, so you've seen the Bronco. It's got like the sights. Yeah, but those are on the front. leading edge. Leading this edge. is back further like on a back, Jeep. Yeah, there's only like a few inches from the windshield. So then this is the SUV. And so the SUV has a external spare tire, which is cool. Are those uh, vertical slots in the uh, tailgate, do they do anything? Go back one. See, to the left of the logo, just design. Probably to do some tie down system or something like that. I think it's cool how they did the lighting. It looks like a gear design on the edges, so the light looks like it's diffused with like um, little, I don't the, know, like gear teeth or something. There's like that. no way you can describe that. You no. got to see. So go to yeah. Sean at Sean P Holman to his uh, to the Instagram to see these yeah, photos. Lots of photos. Door handles. Some that, cool. Now wait a minute. Go back to the door handles. Damn, there's a lot of. This is like a Ring Brothers door handle. Like yeah, this is crazy really cool. detail in that yeah. handle. The door handles are super cool. And Holy then mackerel. it's funny. Everybody was like, "Oh, I can't believe." So you got to remember, the last International Scout rolled off the assembly line in 1980 with square headlights, and they went with square headlights that have like the Porsche four dot LED in there. And everybody's like, "They should have gone round. They should have gone round." And then everybody on the internet's like. If they went round, you would have said it looks like a, a Bronco. Now you're saying it looks like a Rivian. Like, well, you're just going to complain. Yeah. Like, it's, I think it's cool. Triangular. I think, I, yeah. I think the way they did it is cool, but this has that other gear pattern with like that backlit. I think it's pretty neat on the headlights. And then the front is huge. I get another picture in here. I'll talk about tires in a minute. Again, big front. Got cup holders in the front. So when you're sitting in the front at a, a tail front party, or a front gate party, you can uh, sit there and have a place Dude, for your that beer. that is perfect. If they still had um, drive-in movies, this that is would the be that vehicle. would be awesome for yeah. that. Uh, so again, going back to uh, external full-size spare, now real that, tie-down that, that or spare, uh, tow hooks. The, 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 the piece that's wrapping fully around the spare is really unique. It's going to be cool until you need to put a bigger tire on it. Oh. And then where do you put it? So that'd be interesting. But we'll talk about tires again in a second. And then they have the kind of... Uh, horizontal uh, LED lights in the place where the reflectors used to be, and they kind of disappear through the side and then go out through the back. Very clean, ve- very elegant. I feel like those won't make it to the real vehicle. Those uh, will I, end up being reflectors, I bet you. No, those will be lights. Oh, you think so? Yeah, okay, yeah, for sure. And then this is the the onboard air system that uh, looks like an analog gauge. So there's lots of little old school analog things for, th- th- that represent digital things, and I like it because it adds character. Uh, tow hooks, again, are super cool. The uh, tow here, hooks the look very, very modern. All of this yeah. looks so futuristic, and yet hark- harkens back to uh, you know days of I, yesteryear. It's I cool. think they said, "Listen, we, we're not trying to bring the old Scout back, but we want to bring the elements of what Scout was into the modern era." And honestly, I think they did a pretty good job. So let's talk about what they are and what they aren't. What I am most stoked on, I think, is that they promised us that they were going to go after the off-roader. And like I said earlier, I'm like, oh, it's going to be freaking IRS, well, hold, IFS. Hold, hold, hold on a second. So they're saying, I want to go after the off-roader, but it's going to be electric. So it's not totally at odds, but it, a little so bit. So to this point, Rivian has hands down the best electric truck, especially for adventure. It's got the range. It's got, it's set up for adventure. It's It's got, you know, 34-inch uh, tires and it's, you know, it's all the things. Um, the things I don't like, I'm not a big fan of IRS off-road. And so I couldn't believe when I found out that, well, let's put it this way. You're not this, telling me the Scout is not solid axle. The Scout is not a skateboard chassis. They went to body on frame, just like a traditional truck. The rear axle is solid. IFS with a solid E axle on the back. And 35-inch tires from the factory, full skid plating, full capability. It's going to have a 2,000-pound payload. It's going to be able to tow 10,000 pounds. Wow. It's going to be a real truck. Now, you look and you say, well, well it's going to suck because battery, blah, 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 yeah, blah. Yeah. So. 350 miles, which is decent. Sure. 350 miles range. They're doing a range extending version of that. 500 miles of range. The onboard gas generator is supposed to give you, uh, they estimate, at least 150 miles of range. 
So you can fill up at the gas station and get 150 miles, or you can fill up at a charging station and get 350, or together you can get 500 miles at least. Now here's where I think the range exists. So I sent a note to Scout, and I said, here's the problem with the Rivian is when you're out of... Wait, this is a, a note to Scout talking yes. about Rivian. This is No, this is a note to Scout talking about their product. I okay. said, Rivian exists right now. And the problem is, is you can use it as an adventure truck. It's capable. It has all the things you need to, except for the charging infrastructure. So when I'm out, I'm out. So I got to leave the trail and I got to go into where there's a charger network. This is, I can go to where there's any gas station, but it only works if you do X. And I explained, I went through this whole diatribe of why. So what I told them is in your... I feel like you're leaving something out. I'm, something I'm important. getting there. Okay. So what I told them is, Think about if you have 500 miles. If the E-Rev, right, the extended range EV, only kicks in after the battery's depleted, let's say I leave home, I'm going on an adventure, I'm going on a thousand mile trip, and there's only gas stations, I'm not going to fill up. I have 500 miles when I leave home. Well, my next fill up, after 500 miles, I only get 150 miles, and then I only get 150 miles, and then I only get 150 miles. Okay. So I told them, you need to make it where the driver can prioritize in like an overlanding mode to use E-Rev up first and use the big battery 350 miles as the auxiliary. Because then, if you're doing 100, 150 miles a day, which is probably the limit of what you would do in a vehicle like this, you always have 350 in reserve and you can easily refuel to 150. Make sense? Uh, yeah. So if you use it backwards, you're better. If you use it where you use up all your battery first, you only get 150 mile chunks That's after that. That's what I'm saying, yeah. yeah. If you do it backwards where the driver can prioritize E-Rev first... Then you get 150 mile chunks at a time, up to a 350 mile auxiliary tank. After that, seems like a software issue. Well, that's what I said. I said this could be done with software. I want you guys to be thinking about this is great, but it's only great if it's implemented in the way that makes sense. Because I'm not once I use up my battery, I'm not going to be able to find another battery if I'm on a trip somewhere, right? Like I'm going to have to go into a city center or whatever to fill. But I can get gas anywhere. So let me use up the gas first because I can easily replenish that every day on the trip and then let that battery be my uh Interesting my extra. that they were thinking the other way around. Well, I don't know what they were thinking. Logical, they right. haven't talked about it yet because oh. they're so early in development. And because they're so early in development, I was saying like, guys, this is how you should make this work. Because if you can make it work this way, like you've got a winner. Because now there's no range anxiety. Because I'm not going to drive 300 miles in a day, but I might go 200 maybe, right? Might go 250 if there's some highway involved. Mm -hmm. Well, then if I'm only burning the gas portion of it and I can fill that up easily, then I'm always uh, then I'm only taking small chunks out of that 350 battery capacity. Right. They're talking about um, a thousand pound feet of torque. It'll be a dual motor. So, uh, like I said, it's going to be e axle. So it won't be like Rivian where you have quads. It'll scoot. Uh, but it'll be plenty fast. Uh, you can re reserve right what's, now. What's the Rivian? Do you recall just top of your mind? Uh, it's like around 1,000 as well, It's right? like 1,100 or something or for the top quad motor, but this will be close. out of two. Okay. Um, and so less complexity. There's a bunch of people who are like, oh, I know why it looks like a Rivian because they're in a joint venture. So I Th talked, That's what everyone said. But the joint venture is not for the vehicle. The joint venture is for software only. So they're sharing software and their joint venture is building EV UX software. Um, and software for vehicle. What you will see and why this can be the price point that it is, and they're calling for fifty to $60,000 uh, really? to start, yes, okay, is because they're owned by VW. VW bought what International, and when they bought International, they got the Scout patent and trademarks, and so when they decided they wanted to go after the EV market, they, they said, let's revive Scout, because Scout came with that portfolio. That's how this all came to be. But there's going to be a lot of stuff under the skin that's from Volkswagen Group. So they have the economies of scale and distribution Volkswagen to be able to buy. They're the behemoth. Big, yeah, the, one of the biggest car companies in the world. So when you have that and you're not a small guy like Rivian, you now have the supply chain advantage of purchasing and using parts bin stuff where you don't see it. And now you are able to lower the cost of your vehicle versus the competitor. So that's where the VW stuff comes in. But the software is where the Rivian part comes in. Nothing, and I mean nothing, of this vehicle will be shared with Rivian. They are very clear about that. Now, here's another thing that I wanted to bring up because it was really fast. Um, I don't, haven't seen a lot of people report on it, and they didn't belabor the point. They said that Scout is about you. Scout is about the relationship. And Scout is about being their customer. They said under no uncertain terms, like flat out, we will not share your data. We will not make you our product. You're our customer. And you can be rest assured that if you buy a Scout vehicle, 
you know, all the over the air updates and all that are between you and us. We're not selling you. We're not tracking you. We're not trying to make you a product for other people. That's well, well, huge. I have not heard. Well, what are they saying though? Are they accusing Tesla and Rivian and others? Every for company. Doing? What do you mean accusing? It's it's well known. If you have a new vehicle yeah. that has over the air updates, yeah. Every manufacturer, go look through your agreement when you buy the car. Every manufacturer is selling your data. It's prolific through the industry right now. And that's a huge That thing. would explain a lot from Ram because so, I get a lot of messages that well, I didn't used to. Yeah. So basically they're saying buy this and then we're not going to be selling your data to people. That is a massive, massive that alone makes me well, go. Well, let's see let's if, they about trust. if there's a lot of money to be made. So let's see if they're not selling that information like Experian or the credit companies or whatever else. They're turning down but a lot of money, the, but the yeah, fact that they said that this these are the brand tenants that we're building this brand upon is going to be trust and a relationship with our customers. You're our customer, not our product. I thought that was awesome, and I'm like, okay, let's see if anybody else uh, figures it out. So anyway, uh, bed is six feet wait, uh, wait, compared wait, to the- I, I, I have to stop you. Something important here. You, used, you just used the word brand. Scout was a brand. Well, yep. it was a subset of you know International Harvester, okay. right? Is this its own brand? Yes. It, it is. It so will not be sold in VW dealerships. It will not be serviced in VW dealerships. They will have their own dealership network. They will have their own service network. Um, it's a completely new standalone brand. So this is going to be like the executive staff will be located in their own building. You, you would yes, imagine. It right? already is. Yeah, they have their own plant. They're building right now in South Carolina. Uh, that is only building Scout products. They can build up to 200,000 units a year when they get up to full tilt. And they said that uh, based on their business plan, they'll be able to be profitable after the first year of production and sales uh, for building the plant. What the hell? But, yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of nuggets how, how, in there. The, here, here's, here's what I'll say. Again, go to my Instagram, at Sean P. Holman. I live stream the event. It's about an hour long. That video is on my reels. Watch that video, and you can learn a ton about what they're doing. But- so far, I got to tell you, I'm I'm really impressed. I, I love the tow hooks and the full skid plate. I love body on frame. I love the solid rear axle. I love that it's not a skateboard. I love that durability is being built in mind. And I love the fact that there's an e-rev just like on the Ram where you're going to be able to have a small gasoline engine acting as a generator to charge your batteries while you're driving. So this is not a hybrid. Uh, the difference between an e-rev and a hybrid, a hybrid, the gas engine touches the drivetrain and can spin the wheels. On an E-Rev, the gasoline or diesel, whatever it happens to be, will only act as a generator, charge the battery. So the electric motors are always turning well, the wheels. That's but, the difference. But for clarity, though, you have a P1 and a P2 hybrid. And one... Yeah, but that doesn't exist in the... You're saying that because you work at banks and you're doing military uh, um, hybrid programs. Is that true? That, no, that, no, that no, doesn't I, exist in the consumer market. I didn't they don't know understand that. that. I didn't know that. Yeah. I, I, I just know that because I was schooled. I had no in, idea. Engineers, yes. Engineers are going to be like, oh, that's a P1, P2 consumers aren't being are, are not being educated to that level you a hybrid is it's kind of like all-wheel drive versus four-wheel drive uh technically the same thing but the way it's marketed and the way customers understand it all-wheel drive has a single speed transfer case four-wheel drive has a two-speed transfer case that's how e-rev and hybrid are going to be marketed nobody is high is nobody's going to be marketing an e-rev as a hybrid they're going to be marketing as an ex range extending ev Got it. So no different than putting a portable Honda generator in the bed of the truck to charge the batteries as you drive. Sure. Okay. Sure. Except you're doing it with a system that's designed to be all integrated and stuff like that. All right. So 10,000 pounds of towing on the Terra. I think they're trying to get to 7,500 uh, on the Traveler, which is the SUV. And, you know, zero to 60 around three, three and a half seconds. I mean, this is this looks to me like all the things you want to see checked off your box like all the things that I, I wasn't i didn't love the irs on the rivian i thought that there's a little bit of a compromise in off-road capability and handling due to the on-road performance which is awesome but again rivian is my favorite ev truck i think it's the best i think it's the benchmark that being said scouts three years out a lot of time for rivian to come well, up i was and, just gonna yeah. say because rivian saw they know everything they, if they, i'm at rivian yeah. i'm inspecting everything i yeah. can about this truck yeah. and i'm going to go after it Hard. Full force. Hard. Yeah, absolutely. Now, that but, being said, I guarantee you there's a bunch of stuff Scout's not telling you yet that they're going to do. Probably. So and it's the Volkswagen, stuff, right? So the, yeah. So the stuff that they're showing you, you got to be like, that's per, I mean, there's more. You know, they're not telling us everything because they're not going to, the first time they launch the brand isn't going to be like, oh, here, look, look at everything. They're going to be like, here's some cool stuff. Here's our philosophy. Here's what we want to do. Pretty stoked though. Being able to be out there, I, I appreciate Scout flying me out. Where where did this take place? Because uh, looked... Nashville, Tennessee. No, no, no. I know that, but like it looked like it was. I couldn't tell. There was trees around. It was outdoors, and it's they... like a, a private ranch. 
It was a ranch. Okay. Yeah. So they put a they built a set within, you know. Yeah, it looked like that, a movie set. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It was just a portable like, you know, reveal set that they built. Cool. I think from my standpoint, um Scout's been listening to everything everybody's been saying about what would make an EV truck acceptable, and it sounds like they've done their job to really try and figure that out. Who are these Scout people that you think were at the LA Auto Show, reading OVR magazine, listening potentially oh, I know to this some podcast. I know, I know them. Some of them are former Ford employees. Uh, the head designer was a former Jeep designer. One of my friends who works at Scout in an undisclosed uh, position uh, came from Rivian. Another one of my friends was one of the uh, high up PR people at Chrysler. So there are good automotive people that have gone to Scout, but the vibe is really different. You go to a lot of corporate events and you just feel like it's a corporate event. This felt more startup. It was a lot looser, a little bit more fun. Like it wasn't quite as like organized. Like it felt fresh and new. And there was, it's like, I don't know. It just wasn't, everything wasn't choreographed to the minute. And there were a few flubs and they're like, Hey, we're just, this is our first day. Right. Oh, also for your off-roading people, uh, sway bar disconnects as well. No kidding. So I mean, uh, again, oh, and mechanical lockers. Front and rear mechanical lockers. Not tying two electric motors together virtually to do a virtual locker, but actual mechanical lockers inside a differential to give you real locked up capability. I wonder why would you do that when you can lock them electronically? Well, this is, remember, this is a dual motor, not a quad. So when you have a quad Uh motor where each wheel is driven individually, you have to do a virtual lockup, which is why Tesla was able to do lockers with an over-the-air off-road update after the Cybertruck came up, which is why Rivian has that. But... Do you, do you not think that they'll go to a four-motor setup in the Scout? You, well, you can't do that on a solid axle because the axle sits in the the motor sits in the center of the axle where the pumpkin is. It's an e-axle. Hmm. But you could separate the two halves of the axles, and you could there could be a way to drive each side of the axle. Like, well, you do that with a the differential, no different than today how you can torque vector or something like that. Hmm. So there's a lot more to uh, to learn and unpack on this. But uh, again, 35s from the factory. I think they have a hit. The things I didn't like about Rivian, they're saying that they're going to fix. We'll see what happens. Rivian's got time to answer this volley, but uh, it's solid. Were those 20s on there? They look cute. Those are 20s. Yeah. yeah. Okay. On 35s. 35s. That's why it really fills the wheel well. They did a nice job, dude. I'm, a, I'm really excited about this. This is the first truck that I've seen that makes me question the TRX ownership. This is the first truck that I've seen that makes me think I might be able to fit something like this into my lifestyle. The mm. Rivian, I loved everything about it except for being an EV. The fact that this is range extending right. is a game changer for my use case. So this is very interesting. This moment in time is special because we're we're seeing... We're saying goodbye to V8s yeah. and we hate it, but now we're starting to see some innovation that's kind of making, I think, an eyebrow raise and go, okay, I'm not on board yet. But I'm not closed off to it either. But I feel like when you and I went to Phoenix and we saw the Badger, Mm -hmm. and it was not real, but we saw the picture and then we saw the clay model and Mm -hmm. all that stuff. And we go, that is an amazing looking truck. Mm -hmm. Too bad it'll never come out, right? We're like, oh, this is going to be vaporware, but boy, wouldn't this be cool. Mm -hmm. But here it is. A little bit. Here it is with with Volkswagen behind it as Scout. This is cool. That's like exciting. I could, I could replace. This is a, how how far out are we? Twenty twenty seven. So at least 20, two, two to three years. So we got a long time. It's going to be a long roll with lots of stuff coming out and and stuff. The plant's how not done being built to, now. Are they, are they? How are they going to keep interest for the next couple of years? How are they oh, going to? There's going to be you, plenty of interest. By the way, gonna, how are they going to keep you I, from buying a Rivian I'm between not, now and then? I'm not lying to you when I tell you this. It was just like Tesla, hundred dollar deposit. Within two hours of this reveal, 22 of my friends, I counted, on Facebook, DMs to me, comments of my thing, pre-ordered. 22. Wow. That's just my circle. Are you going to? Uh, I, I'm not going to pre-order, no. I, I, I could have done it, but I'm like, I'm going to wait. Is there I'm, any advantage to pre-order? I don't think so. I mean, maybe you get it first, but I don't know that I want the first, first, first one. Mm-hmm. In three years, I might be ready for it. You know, like this, maybe this could replace uh, the Jeep at some point and the Aria. How dare you? Uh, no, but I'm just thinking. No, like, but I mean, it could at, do both. At some point, I'm go- that thing's not going to last forever. It's crazy. Like the the reason you got the Aria is because you didn't like doing the one mile trips to yeah. drop your daughter off at school. Mm-hmm. This doesn't care. This doesn't care. So the other thing is, could this potentially replace the Super Duty regular cab long bed in my mind? Because I wanted ten thousand pounds of towing, and this is also able to do the family stuff. 
do I need that truck in three years? Would this make more sense? Have one vehicle do all those things? Wow. Now, I'm just talking out loud. I'm not saying that's what I'm thinking, but I'm just, my mindset is evolving as I think about this technology. Literally, that letter I wrote to Scout about eRev and how to implement it happened on my shuttle ride home. I was talking through some stuff with people. I'm like, oh, no, they have it. They better be thinking about this or they have it wrong. This is how it has to happen. And I've, I hope you get a letter back that says, thank you for bringing this to our attention. <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe. Or Who did you send it to? Your buddy? Yeah, I've got some friends there. Okay. Yeah. So I, I said, hey. Will it get read? Oh, 100%. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it went to people that matter. The right people. Yeah, yeah. I just, and they may be thinking about it already, but it's like, I'm thinking about that going, are you guys, you, you have a lot going on right now, but this could change how people interact with your product forever. You could blow past everybody by making this one change which I just gave out on the Truck Show podcast yeah. for free. <laughs> uh, mostly because I want to shame them into doing it if they're not already. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if, if you're Rivian, are you thinking about putting a generator on board? But I don't know if they- Why wouldn't you? Where would you put it? I guess- I you, don't know, but In the could, tunnel? I guess I, you would I don't put know. it- That was never- It doesn't have to be that big, does it? Well, they don't- no, They've never- a, It's a skateboard. They haven't developed a fuel tank, the crash around a fuel yeah, tank, right. the emissions around a, a generator- like that's all being baked into this. So I don't know. I don't know how easy or hard it would be. Could they do an e-rev? Who would they pull from? How many, like doesn't Volkswagen have like a one liter three cylinder? Wouldn't that be perfect to be a generator? Right. Right? Like a one liter or, or one that are little, like a little golf. Real high RPM. Just, just, <laughs> yes. Like just in, it's in the back under the bed or something like that. You don't even hear it. It's just out there mm. doing its thing. A lot to think about. I don't know. There, it's just, it's. I'm super stoked. You probably hear it in my voice. I just thought I was going to see a new vehicle to report on, and I ended up w- walking away seeing a vehicle that, that you might buy. Well, not even might buy, but completely transforms my thought process on on how something like this could integrate into my personal use case. Kind of turns it on its end a little bit. So it's it's cool. Like I said in my Instagram post, I'm pretty excited about this one. When can um, we speak to someone from Scout? Uh, it'll probably be a little it's while. Too, it's premature yeah, now? Probably early next year, I, I would think. Mm, okay. Yeah, but I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I know people there. So okay. we'll, we'll, we'll get somebody on. I think they just want to get past the... They've been building up for... A year to for this announcement. I'm sure. Right? I'm sure they were in like panic mode the day oh, before. Oh, I'm this sure. Happened. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Like they're just happy it's behind them now. Now they all need to like you know go drinking or something like that and go. Woo, we did it. That's probably already happened. I heard the vehicles got there the day before. These are the only two I guess that exist in the world, and they're like. 80%. I feel like that happens with every reveal. We think I, that these maybe. big companies I, they are, all have it together. Yeah, and, they have it together, and it's been sitting there under a tarp for weeks, yeah. and they've been. Out having dinners and schmoozing. Oh, we got the trucks there. No, like, dude, they're in panic, like, SEMA mode. Yeah, like all the time. Right, like, the morning the show starts, they're wheeling it in, opening the truck and backing it out off the uh, the big Uh, rig. I don't know. I just, I gotta gotta wonder, like, uh, you know, where do we go from here? This is pretty cool. All right, well, uh, if you guys have uh, questions about Scout or you have your own comments, if you saw it, if you went to my Instagram, if you were online doing research, hit us up, truckshowpodcast at gmail.com. We want to hear from you or... Of course, the five star hotline, 657 205 6105. And with that being said, let's read some emails. You email? Yeah. I email. Do it. We email. That's right. Everybody email. Type it up. You email. Proofread. I email. Send it. We email. Click it. Everybody email. All right, who's up? You want to do it? You want me to start? I'll do it. All right, you go first. So I don't know. Uh, I was going around on the uh, interwebs. Did you see that TRX tra- uh, crash in Georgia? No. Oh, our, our buddy uh, Ray wrote. And he said a sad case of TRX's driver that lost big time to a tree. Uh, but while the Georgia State Police officer is in a pursuit before happening upon the accident scene, um, he was says, this a stolen TRX? No, it was a guy who apparently had a maybe a run in before, and he was like, "I can outrun the GSP." So he basically got in a pursuit and live streamed it. Ended up live streaming his own death. It was crazy. And the TRX hit a tree at over 100 miles an hour, sheared the entire side of it off, sitting in the middle of the road. And as the Georgia State Police officer came around the corner, the dude's just hanging in, like, from the driver's seat. And then you're going like, dude, why? Why? Like, who who thinks, like, oh, this is going to be the day that I'm going to outrun the, you know, the Hemi Charger police cars in my TRX? I mean, you just... 
it was sad. Like I don't, I, I don't know the whole backstory of was, why the guy it, did it. Was but... it ripped down the center or sideways? No, no, it's like peeled out. It's well, pe- like the back of the truck was across the street, and it was okay. all. I mean, you can't even make the truck out except to see like it was tuna canned, where the entire cab was crushed, and the whole all the doors were peeled off one side, and then the side of the cab was like open toward the street, and the dude was just hanging just out, just hanging by a seatbelt, and you're just going like, man, what a waste. It's so like I just I isn't I it weird that that dude that that dude yeah was alive yeah and, and now then he's he, and not. then he wasn't yeah and he was like live streaming because he's like oh, I'm gonna outrun the Georgia State Police I'm like why so the live stream again is what people were watching like they they've captured it and it's out there now I I didn't go looking for yeah, it because it, it, it was it was real bad and and I was not in... the one that I saw the other day was um it was a different truck I don't know what the truck was a silver one and it was in a high speed pursuit and it um lost control. And then hit the underpinnings of a bridge and split. Oh, it into that pieces. that was here. That was a Honda CRV. Uh, that was a pursuit a few days ago. It was. Uh, I think that one was stolen, and the CHP were were chasing the driver, and the driver went into the dirt. Well, it 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 deked the CHP like it was going off, and so the CHP took the on wrap and it flipped over, and that was it was going. There's like a dirt uh, on the side the of the shoulder, right? The shoulder. And it overcorrected, got in the shoulder, and then just went sideways at over 100 miles an hour into a bridge pillar off the like 14 freeway or something like that. Just split it and open like split, a razor blade. Yeah, just just done. Shwoop. Guys, uh, like, stop it. Stop, yeah. yeah. Stop it, dude. Stop it. Be- go to jail. Listen, if you broke the law, just go to jail. Do your time. I, I, don't, don't die. Don't yeah, kill don't, yourself. Don't. Yeah. So uh, there's places online where you can find out this person's account, and you can, I'm sure you can find it. Uh, but yeah, I guess he was frustrated with law enforcement. Uh, he thought that he had been, uh, I guess, being harassed because of the window tint on his TRX. And then he just decided like he was just going to give it that day. And uh, you see the officer on his dash cam of his car just walks up. And he's just shaking his head. He just like points to the thing on his camera and just shrugs like, like what am I going to do for this guy? You know, so... Anyway, that, that and, and listen. So I got so Ray. I, thanks I, for sending that to us. Kind of, I and guess. By the way, I want to talk about this for a second. Yeah. So there was a time. By the way, not, the T Rex is on the screen. If you want to see uh, what it what it looked like uh, split in half. Uh, oh, oh man! It's got the ram bar and the and the bed on one side of the street. Yeah. And uh, the rest the, of the truck. And, and on the rest the of other. the truck where the driver used to exist. Yeah. Is that the driver hanging out right yeah, there? That's it. Yeah, he's he's done. You, you drive that truck every day. Could you imagine it ever looking like that? No, like you can't even see what it is. This is you don't even know that no. this is a truck anymore. Oh, you know what that is? That's a transformer that got blown up mid transform. Yeah, not good. It's just just pieces of them. I was gonna say is that so the window tint thing. I've been meaning to talk about this for some time. Okay, in the nineties and two thousands, you and I, anybody in SoCal, I'm sure a lot of other communities, uh, other states, you get a ticket for uh, window tint because it's a it's illegal, right? Well, here but, it is. It is here. A lot of other places it's illegal because the cops can't see in, so they've outlawed it, right? Well, then the highway patrol, it's still illegal now, but the highway patrol just doesn't have the bandwidth to pull over everyone with window tint. So they're like, eh, whatever, just just do it. But like, I do feel for the cops, even today, like I look over at people and I go, I can't see them. Yeah. And if I were and they a cop, don't know, but people are shooting them left and right. And if I if I were a yeah. cop and I had to pull this dude over, dude. man, it would absolutely yeah. suck. Yeah, no, that's not good. So anyway, you, you a shout out to our law enforcement yeah. friends out there because yeah. uh, we, we you have a tough you. job. Yep. Yeah, and it's only uh, getting tougher. I, I think I told you I went on a helicopter ride along a few weeks ago. Yes, of course. Yeah, so it was interesting to see Los Angeles from the air in what an LAPD. What does that have to do with tinted windows? It has to do with police department, oh. police officers. Oh. And I thought to myself, my friend is up here flying the LAPD, but he's not getting shot at. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm like that has to be the best job in <laughs> law enforcement. Except, like, except if he loses uh, one engine, well, he falls like a rock. Well, he only has one engine, so there's I'm that. Saying. We can uh, auto rotate, but yeah. but no, I, I'm thinking like he can spend the rest of his career doing like flying, and he's above the fray. He's helping out guys on the ground. He's doing that, and he's not the guy like getting shot at every day. Although they do shoot at the police helicopter. It, Don't it, get it me wrong, happen. that does yeah. happen. Yeah, but uh, I got to tell you, being up on that ride along uh, with LAPD was uh, phenomenal. Uh, a lot of you who don't live here don't understand how California came to be. You'll go into the Midwest and there'll be a town and a road and then another town and a road and another town. 
uh, in Southern California, all the towns touch each other. And it's funny when you have people go, I don't know where I am because there's no delineation when between... When you say touch each other, there are some that have fingers into each other. Yeah, but there, there's no delineation. They're like, they're like jigsaw puzzles. You cross the street and if you miss the sign that says you're in such and such city in the median, like you don't, it looks the same as the other side of the other town behind you because they all touch each other. Well, here is different because instead of being on the East Coast where a lot of towns grew out, uh, these towns grew into each other. And so it's like, uh, where was I just looking at? The state of Georgia? I can't remember. I was looking somewhere where their like state population was like just under 4 million. We have 11 million just in the LA greater area. That's insane. By the way, uh, you're wrong. It's 14 million in LA and OC. Okay. Like 14. Six so the city something. of LA is 10. Yeah. Okay. Because L- OC is 3.4 or 3.6 or something like that. We have that many in just like 100 square miles versus like an entire state. But seeing LA from the air, because it's a really confusing city, the way it's laid out, it's there's like long fingers down to the port, it's inland. Uh, and you're like, how it takes me 20 minutes or 30 minutes to get from Hollywood to downtown LA or these suburbs here. And you're thinking like, why, why, how are all these things interconnected? And when you do it from the air, you go, oh, wow, before there was traffic, it would be a 15-minute drive. You were 15 minutes from your studio up in Bel Air or something like that. Or or downtown L.A. would have been 15 minutes from the beach or 20 minutes max from the beach or whatever. And so, like, seeing the city and patrolling it from the air, you kind of had this new understanding of, like, I get how it grew. Because if you're a new person and they dropped you in the middle of L.A., like, good luck. You'd cry. You'd just be like, I don't even know. <laughs> like, you see mountains on one side and... You like hopefully an ocean on the other side, and then you're like, I don't know what else, because it's it's a crazy laid out place. All right, this one's from David Turry. So he says, I seen this, which by the way is I have seen or I saw, but I'll read it like you wrote it. So I seen this, and my Kenworth T800 is feeling bulge, and the attached photo. I don't is... think it's bulge. I think it's bulge. <laughs> That's what I think. That you think it Okay. Yeah. Uh, and it's, ah, oh, that's funny. This is a, a container of Def, and it is, uh, it's in pumpkin orange color, and it says, Banks, pumpkin spice Def. And, uh, it was just a joke that we did, I think, last year or the year before for the, uh, for the gram, for the Instagram from Banks. So, uh, it would be funny, though, if, um, if, if you someone did it again? released, what? If you did it again? <laughs> I, I'm, or actually have, sold it? We have a lot more, uh, Instagram followers now than we did then, so it wouldn't hurt to do it again. Yeah, sure, why not? What do you got? All right, I got this uh, email from our friend Sam Houston, and I like it because it says Waffle House debate. So we all know there is no debate, but I'll go ahead and read his email. Yes, anyway, there is. It says, uh, guys, had to share this and stir up the debate. And this looks like a uh, dad bod veteran uh, nation uh, Instagram or Facebook reel. Uh, it says, in the form of, quote, unquote, when stirring up the sh- do you start clockwise or counterclockwise? This would be clockwise. By the way, I am on the Waffle House side. Lighting, you are wrong. No. Wrong. And, uh, Try again. Five stars and everything matters. Here's- you will get nothing, sir. Get nothing. You lose. Nope. Good, Good day, day, sir. All right, this video uh, we're going to play right now starts out with a cracker barrel in the background. Can we be honest about what this is? Okay, cracker barrel is just a waffle house with a gift shop. What? My good sir, I think you have a screw loose. Because no rational being would actually state that openly and then publicize it for everyone to see. No, where I'm from, that, that could be the reason for a duel. You don't understand. You see, the Waffle House is the place that I will defend most vigorously of all places in this world because it is a sacred place. It is a, a temple of purity. It is a place where <laughs> no matter who you are, what your background is, Amen, or your brother. level of inebriation, you are accepted there as an equal person. You cross that threshold and you are one in the Waffle House family. But you, sir, you compare it to the Cracker Barrel. I love the Cracker Barrel as well, but it is not the Waffle House. And you want to know why the Waffle House doesn't have a gift shop? Because the Waffle House itself is the gift. <laughs> Only a person who has not truly experienced all of its wonders would say such a word. Sir, I asked you to strike your tone down 
and never say that word again. <laughs> the guy's Amen. wearing a Waffle House shirt. <laughs> of course he is. Uh, no, come that's on. That's Dadbot Veteran uh, on uh, on Instagram. He's, he's great if you uh, watch stuff. I love that. Waffle House is the gift. That, Waffle that House. Should be, that should be forever on every sign at Waffle House. Waffle House is the gift that you leave in the toilet. So are the chili dogs that you uh, just consumed. <laughs> that's very different. Uh, actually, it's not. It's very much the same. I'm saying chili dog. Well, yeah, it's the same customer base, isn't it? It is. <laughs> uh, this one's actually to Sean, but I'll read it. Hey, uh, hey, Sean. As a fellow, oh, hey. hey there. Shift it yourself, enthusiast. I have a question for you. Mm-hmm. So All I've right. considered ordering a JLUR. That's a JL. What is it? Unlimited oh, Rubicon. Uh, uh, unlimited Rubicon with a six-speed and factory 488s mm-hmm. as a third fun rig. To replace my recently sold 2006 Manual Trans LJ Rubicon. Mm-hmm. For not that much more, I could get a used 392. Since you've mm-hmm. had both, is the 392 unequivocally mm-hmm. worth the trade off, or do you still yearn for the manual? Mm-hmm. When I got my 2018 JGC V8, replacing, Grand Cherokee. Yeah, when I, replacing the O2 standard cab short box 4x4 V8 manual Silverado. I thought the added power capability and that paddle shifted V8 would be enough to make up for the loss of a manual, but simply it isn't. In your mind, is the 392 enough to sway the scales? Thanks, Jonathan. Oh, what a question. <laughs> what a world we live in. Um, I'll tell you this. I still get in my 392 after uh, 25,000 miles and owning it for a couple of years, and I go for the clutch pedal every time. And oh, really? You missing. still do? I still do. So that's amusing to myself because I do that and then I laugh at myself as if I'm two different people. Um, and then I think I just did. Do you look in the rear view and just go, oh, ah, yeah, you. you. Um, here's what I'll say. Yes, the 392 is everything. Uh, you will not miss the manual. Um, the only place the manual Jeep exceeds the 392 is rowing your gears around town is a lot more fun. And it's a much better crawler off-road. Way, like, not even close. Like, just way more pleasant to crawl and do slow-speed trail work. The 392, even off-road mode, it wants to hang revs. So what happens is, because it's not upshifting, you have to be on the paddles all the time to shift where you want it. Um, because it will just disgustingly dispose of dead dino juice like you wouldn't even believe. Will it so, shift when you... How sharp is the shifting yeah, with the paddles? No, it's immediate. Oh, it but is. But that's not the problem. Because some lag. You the f- problem is, right. is if you are lazy and you forget what gear you're in because there's so much torque and you're like, oh, I'm at 4,000 RPM, but I don't care and neither does the Jeep. You will get three and a half to four and a half <laughs> miles per gallon crawling in the 392. Uh, okay. Uh, everywhere else, 392 is better. The I would say the manual is a little bit quieter over the road. You get a little bit of a drone. Uh, I would highly recommend getting the no limits from Taser so you take out the four-cylinder mode. But having power, like I climb, if you're familiar with SoCal, climbing out on your way to Vegas at 15 in the um, El Cajon Pass is literally, I have eight speeds. It starts passing people and shifts to seven. And it's like, (laughs) Uh, having a fully loaded Jeep at 6,900 pounds, be able to pass a big rig on a two-lane highway where I'm doing 55 at the back and by the front of the truck I'm doing 85 is like unbelievable. It's amazing. So... Yeah, if you have the option, I would get the 392. The sticks have had a lot of problems with Jeep. If you go with Center Force or McLeod with their uh, clutch update, uh, no issues. It's awesome. You get the billet flywheel, the better clutch, the hydraulic update. All that makes the world a difference. At the end of the day, no regrets with my 392. It's better in 90% of use cases, and those 90% of use cases make you giggle and laugh, and uh, people stare and point, and it's awesome. So. They're staring and pointing because it's you, not because of the... Uh, 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 no, I got tinted windows. <laughs> Super dark. Nobody can see me. Truckshowpodcast at gmail.com. Send us an email, won't you? The Truck Show. The Truck Show. The Truck Show. Oh, oh. All right. Follow us on social at Truck Show Podcast, at Sean P. Holman, at LBC Lightning. You can hit us up on the five-star hotline, 657-205. 6105 or please send us an email we will read it that is holman at truckshowpodcast.com lightning at truckshowpodcast.com or truckshow at gmail uh, no, truckshowpodcast at gmail.com gmail. yes yeah so uh do all those things communicate with us we love interacting with you guys and oh lightning i forgot to tell you about uh the second president on the show the second yeah you had teased it at the beginning yes. and i just forgot about it uh that would be me wait what yeah so uh uh, not only am I the president of... Are you like, wait, wait, don't yeah. tell me. Mm-hmm. You're the president of something with your daughter's school. I am. I'm the president of the Consultative School Board. 
<laughs> is that true? That's true. And I'm in the middle of a uh, uh, putting together a five year strategic plan, and that's way more than I bargained that for. That sounds awful. Yeah. And then I would I, do everything I could to ditch that. But hold on, hold on, it gets better. I also was recently elected to replace our friend Desert Explorer, Billy Creech. Billy Creech, Desert Explorer. And I am the new president of the Mojave Desert Heritage and Cultural Society. No, Association. you are not. Yeah, and I told them no, and they all looked at me and they're like, yeah, no, it needs to be you. And um, yeah, yeah, so I'm doing that you now. You are the next. Billy Creech. Desert Explorer. And now I'm just <laughs> Holman, Desert Explorer. So I need to make a new one of these. Billy Creech, Desert Explorer. Hey ho, teach us what you know. Go ahead, Billy. We're waiting. Billy? <laughs> well, we're going to be waiting a long All time. All those Billies will be Holmans. <laughs> we're we're going to be. Uh, Holman? We're gonna, well, it's weird if it's, if it's my voice, but uh, we're going to be waiting a long time because uh, he is uh, he's no longer the president. He turned out. Did he die? Uh, no. Is he okay? He, he, he's still alive, right. uh, but he turned out, and so uh, I will be soliciting. Wait, how, wait, termed out. how many terms can you run? Uh, he had three, I think. Three uh, terms? Yeah. How long are the terms? Uh, a year. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's fine. So uh, anyway, um, I will be uh, using this platform to get you to uh, join the MDHCA. Well, no, hold on a second. And are I'm you sure about you want to do that? We Absolutely. have a lot. Of, we, uh, yes, we have a lot of California yep. listeners. We also have a lot of listeners that don't live in California. We also have a lot of listeners that live in Nevada and Arizona and Colorado and come out okay. to do the Mojave Road and okay. are interested in history. So uh, I'm going to go ahead every once in a while and just plug that. And while I'm at it, I'm going to plug... Uh, OVR Magazine. We're going to be at the LA Auto Show again this year, uh-huh. and this time we That's have- right after SEMA, isn't uh, it? Right after SEMA, a 10-day run of overlanding vehicles. It's, yeah, but they, they the downsized on. your pace now. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah. like you know, 100 square feet We now? were at 26,000 last year, and we were dropped down to uh, 22,000, and now we're up to 33,000 <laughs> square feet of the LA Auto Show. What are you going to do with it? Do you need a TRX? We, we know we have 42 vehicles so far that okay. are going to be on display in the overlanding booth, but here's what I'm going to tell you guys. I'm going to try and get, and I'm not announcing this now. I'm just giving you an idea. I'm going to do something for you guys. I'm going to give, give you- Give them LA Auto Show tickets? Oh, here, here's what we're going to do. If you go and subscribe, not using the truck show code word, which you could use that for OVR Magazine and get a free digital subscription. But if you legitimately, by the way, if you use that, you get 10% off print. So do that. If you can show me that you legitimately signed up and paid for the magazine- I want to give the first X amount of people who want them tickets to the LA Auto Show. You can't say X. You got to put well, a number. No, I don't it. know, but I don't know how many I can get yet. As soon as I figure out how many tickets I can get, like maybe the first twenty or something like that, I will give you a pair of tickets to the LA Auto Show. So start thinking about that and start uh, subscribing. And uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna hook you guys up. Anybody who's in SoCal or or not, if you want to come out for the LA Auto Show, which is one of the biggest auto shows in the country, I will. Uh, now wait a I'll minute. Make so, trade for you. Hold a second. So you scratch my back, I scratch yours. Now, do I get a pair of tickets because I'll I give work you? For yeah, I give you a pair of tickets. Anyway. And we were an advertiser in OVR. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. You're fine. Yeah, okay. I'll get you a pair of tickets. Yeah. I haven't been in a couple of years. It's a really good show. Yeah, no, it's great. It's, it's even better. Last year was not great because of the auto worker strike and all that. OVR obviously was in there, and it was the first time in the 116 years of the LA Auto Show a non OE was on the main show floor, and they invited us back. So we're going to be. Last year we were next to Hyundai and Subaru. We're actually across, uh, right across from Ford this year. We've got some amazing vehicles. Um, we've got the uh, the Fox factory trucks. Okay. We've got some stuff from Ford from Toyota. Uh, so we've got some OEs in there, and then we've got a lot of vintage, new, old, overlanding vehicles all built up in different ways. It's going to be really awesome. So hopefully you guys will join us at the LA Auto Show, but I, I want to throw that out there. Yeah, if you want to subscribe to OVR and you want some LA Auto Show tickets, uh, we'll announce some more details on that here in the next couple of podcasts. All right. And uh, as we were talking about with uh, Mike Spagnola, president of SEMA earlier, we are going to be out there next week. So um, hit us with an email and say if you are going to be there, and we'll tell you where we are. And if you want to hit us up in, you know, after hours. Buy us we'll a beer. A, yeah, well, buy us a beer. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm willing to buy a couple of beers for, uh, for listeners. So, like, no joke. Like, if you guys, if you're going to be at the SEMA show in Vegas next week, uh, let us know. It is next week, isn't it? It is. Uh, when it's they hear week. this, it'll yeah. be next week. That's what I thought. When they hear this, we will be driving to SEMA. Yeah, right, right. Okay. Uh, maybe not, because I made a mistake of, like, driving out. I'm going to go Saturday. I'm going Saturday to Saturday. Oh, we got to talk about that then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because I, I might go Sunday, but you don't. I mean, you can go whatever you want. Yeah, your your room is just gonna wait for you. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll talk about that off yeah. there. Awesome. Love you guys. Mean it. All that stuff. Oh, by the way, uh, did you see our horrible friend Emmy? 
Yeah, the one that uh, said that you were the worst person in the world. I didn't. Yeah. There was no context to that. I saw her. So Emmy oh, you did, on you her did, Instagram, there was no context. Read? No. Oh, she reposted mine as a story. Uh, my wife wants to still meet Emmy. She's like, I got to meet her. So then I text her, go, oh, look who I found because it was Emmy's birthday. So it was her and me with a Diet Dr. Pepper. I got her one from the bar. Oh, is that got, how that started? Because so Emmy, Emmy and another dude, I forget his name. Uh, Mike Coddle. Okay, so they were both like- yeah. uh, You've Holman seen Mike is... on Fox Sports doing all the automotive content. He's all over the place. Okay, so. So they were like, Holman's the worst person ever. Yeah. We don't like Holman. I'm like, what is yeah, this yeah, about? Go to my Instagram reels. My wife said, oh, I want to. I still want to meet Emmy. You should tell her that. So I started my record button on my phone to go, hey, Emmy, my wife still thinks she you know, wants to meet you. And that's what they said because they're a-holes. Oh, I love it. Yeah. So God, anyway, I love Emmy for that. As Sean P. Holman. Go, go check it out. <laughs> All right. So before we go, we got to thank our presenting sponsor, Nissan. So if you're in the market for a brand new midsize truck or a full-size SUV, we got the 25 Frontier and 25 Nissan Armada on the way. Check them out at your local dealership or head to NissanUSA.com where you can find out all the specs and goodness behind those products. We love Nissan. Nissan loves us. Uh, support them. Get a new truck. And speaking of love, something you're going to love is the Banks Pedal Monster. If you've got a sluggish pedal, you just step down and like there's nothing in the mid-range of your pedal. It's like you could grow a beard faster than you can get in a boost. You need to try a Banks Pedal Monster. It gets rid of all that pedal lag, and there are applications for all sorts of vehicles, cars and trucks. It would blow you away. Just not a Nissan Kicks because it doesn't need it. <laughs> I think there actually is there probably an application yeah. for a Nissan Kicks. But yeah, head over to BanksPower.com to find your pedal monster. All right. We know that you want to put the finest lubricants inside your truck because you want your truck to last years and years and hundreds of thousands of miles. There's only one company to go to, and that is Amsoil. Amsoil is the first in synthetics. Amsoil.com. You can find out everything you need from a lubrication standpoint, but also car care products, which we happen to uh, to really like. So again, go to Amsoil.com and you can find the very best synthetic products for your truck. And I want to remind you guys that the offer at EGRUSA.com is still live and active. You can get up to 30% off and a $250 rebate on all manual roll track bed covers. Head over to EGRUSA.com today. The Truck Show Podcast is a production of Truck Famous LLC. This podcast was created by Sean Holman and Jay Tillis with production elements by DJ Omar Khan. If you like what you've heard, please open your Apple Podcast or Spotify app and give us a five-star rating. And if you're a fan, there's no better way to show your support than by patronizing our sponsors. Oh, hi, Denise. How are you? I'm so sorry you have to be married to Holman because he's literally the worst person I know. Literally.